Hi folks, so I am currently in San Francisco on a work retreat for Felt Maps. Um, it's a company I work for now full time. So I didn't have a, a whole lot of time to put together a custom tutorial this week. So what I wanted to do is share one of the modules from my GeoLayers Masterclass. So this module is all about how to create custom labeled templates in GeoLayers 3, which is really, really cool. In fact, in one of my latest Patreon posts, uh, the surveys that I took, a lot of people upvoted this, that they wanted to learn more about labeled templates. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comment section. And if you wanna check out the full GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, I will link to that down in the video description as well. Enjoy. All right, I've got these labels on my states here, but I wanna go with something more minimal, essentially just text with no background elements. So for that, I'm gonna create my own custom label template. Over here in the GeoLayers 3 items folder, you can find another subfolder called label templates. And the way GeoLayers works is any compositions that you place in this folder will automatically populate over here in this label templates drop down menu here in the GeoLayers panel. So that is one way to create your own label templates. Simply set up a new composition over here and then drag it and drop it in this folder. Or you can come over here to the drop down menu and just hit add template and now you'll see it automatically creates a new composition, which is immediately placed in the label templates folder. And this is already nice and simple, exactly what I'm looking for. And now it's important to understand how GeoLayers is drawing out these labels as you hit that label feature button. So what's happening is it takes this text element here and converts this to the feature name of whatever map feature you have selected over here when you push that label feature button. Now I know this text layer is named feature name, but that's not a requirement to make this work and automatically convert. It's just gonna convert when you do it. Now, if you're working with a pretty dynamic label, if you wanna have, let's say for example, multiple lines of text, and you want certain lines of text to not convert, you want them to stay as you type them in here, simply go ahead and lock those layers and then GeoLayers will leave them alone. If it's unlocked, however, GeoLayers is gonna go ahead and convert it. Now, when you draw out a label, GeoLayers uses the center of the composition as the anchor point, so it's gonna georeference based on this middle of this composition here. If you wanna change that, there's a null object here called label anchor point, and you can manually move that to wherever you like. So if you have a really long line of text, or for whatever reason you just wanna move your anchor point, simply drag this null here, and then when the label is drawn out, it is gonna reposition the anchor point of your label and georeference based on wherever this is. And if you want those layers to automatically be 3D when they're created, simply hit the 3D button for the label anchor point. So if you're creating these compositions from scratch, be sure that you do create a null object that's called label anchor point, and the name here is specific so that GeoLayers can understand it and read it and then tell the label, hey, this is your middle point. Now that I've got this label template, I'm gonna select it over here, just grab it, and I'm gonna turn the visibility of these existing templates off, and we're gonna redraw these. And now I will reselect all of my map features here, all six states, and then with this label template selected, I'll go ahead and add labels. All right, so we have these six new labels, but they look absolutely horrible. So they're not centered, they're a little too big, and, and I might even wanna abbreviate these. So you could go through here and open these up one at a time and reposition them, but that's just a terrible way to work. So what you wanna do is you wanna come back to your label template and modify it. So I'm gonna come back here, grab the text element. I'm gonna go ahead and center this up. I'll go to character and I'll make this a little bit smaller. And now we can go back. Now I don't necessarily need to redraw these out. I can actually swap these because it was only a subtle change that I made. So I'll just go back here and with the same label template selected, I could swap these out and now it automatically repositioned them. It's still looking quite clustered. So I would like to have the names of these states abbreviated. Well, one way you can do this is via your feature properties here. So if you look at the feature properties of one of these map features, you can find a data field called abbreviation right here. And right here, this is how I want these to be drawn out. And all of these features have this same data field. So one way that you can change the way that these are labeled is to change the actual feature name. And you do that via the feature collection here. So I'm gonna grab this feature collection. I'll hit feature properties. And at the top it says name features by, and there's a little drop down menu. And this allows you to pick whatever data field you want. So I can go down here and I can go find that abbreviation, which is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that, and as soon as you apply it, 
check out what happened in my feature collection. It went ahead and renamed all of these. So you can automatically name these however you want based on any data field that you have within the geodata. And now if I go back, I'm pretty sure I can swap the template. I might have to actually rewrite them, but let me just see if I can re-swap these out. Now it's not letting me swap these, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete them, and now I will just re-add the labels with those new feature names. All right, starting to look a lot better, but I think I can do even better. I want it to be even more minimal than this. I want to actually use, I saw that there's another data field. If you come over here, back to feature properties, just under abbreviation you have postal, which is just the two letter abbreviation, and I think I wanna use that. Now I could come back here and do the same thing, grab the feature properties and change the name features by, but let me show you another way. You can actually come into a label template here. What I'm gonna have this text layer do is automatically rename based on one of the data fields. Instead of the feature name, I want it to pull the postal data field. So for that, I actually need to rename this layer and use curly brackets. So I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm gonna type out curly brackets and within the curly brackets, I'm gonna use that code, which if once again, you look in the feature properties, we have the postal property. So it's important you type this code in exactly as is, otherwise it's not gonna be able to read it. It still says feature name in here, but what's important is that you rename the actual layer. That's how it pulls the data. So we'll go back now, and once again, let's see if we can just swap this out. And there you go, check that out. That's a very, very powerful feature. And in fact, you can put multiple lines of data fields within one layer. Let me give you another quick example of this. So I have this route over here going from Boston to Bar Harbor. And if you remember, I had that label drawn out that said 282 miles, and I did that all manually. Well, if you're working with some very specific number data, I could go back here, I could grab this feature. You can see in the name here, in the feature name, it has the miles. But if I look at the feature properties, there should be a field here, and there indeed there is distance, which says 281.804. So I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm gonna rename this one, we'll call it distance, and I'll just go ahead and rename the first one. The first one, let's call it abbreviated states. And I'll open up distance, and now here for the text, I'm just gonna go inside these curly brackets, and I'm gonna type in distance. But one other cool thing you can do is outside of the curly brackets, whatever you type in will show up as actual text. So this will, whatever you type in here, will automatically show up in the text, and then this will pull the data and place it, whatever you have in the curly brackets. So if I come back here, watch now what happens. If I switch my label template to distance, and then with this feature selected, let's go ahead and label it, and there we go, distance, very cool. Now naturally I might wanna format this a little bit more to make it look a little bit better, but I wanna show you one more thing. Notice how this was placed. You can see it's generally placed, the label is generally placed in the center of your map feature. Well, if you go over here and look at the feature properties of your feature, you can see this little symbol, and this allows you to manually put the label wherever you want. So if I want the label to be up here, I can just grab it and put it over here and then apply. And now when I go back, let me just swap out this label. You're gonna see that now it's gonna put that label. Ah, this is another instance where swapping doesn't work. Let me relabel it again. Now when I add this label, it's gonna show up where I changed the default label placement to be. Super, super useful. And you can go and change this again, so you can go back to feature properties, and if you just hit center label position, it's gonna center it back up. Label templates are cool.